Yeah, good afternoon, my beautiful students. Let's conclude. It's good. I'm happy to announce to you that we'll come to the last module of CHE311 Physical Chemistry 2, Colligative Properties of Solutions 2, Module 4.2. I'm Professor Engineer JC Igwe. We're going to look at the remaining two colligative properties. We've looked at vapor pressure lowering. We've looked at depression of freezing point. So we're going to look at elevation of boiling point, then elevation of boiling point and molecular weight. We'll look at osmotic pressure and its application in molecular weight determination. We we'll look at solute in dilute solutions and we'll look at some illustration and we'll conclude. Elevation of boiling point. Now we are going to be very fast because this is exactly the same thing we did. The only difference now you can see in terms of boiling point, like I said, once the lower vapor pressure is lowered, then the boiling point will have to increase because we'll have to heat our solution further. So the same equation here again, solution and gas, we have the chemical potential, that is equation two. And equation three, if we drop some scripts again, like we did in the pressure of freezing point, now instead of fission, we are going to have vaporization. The change in Gibbs, standard Gibbs energy of vaporization. And when we rearrange that equation, we have equation five. And then equation six, which you can use for determination of molecular weight. Remember, X2 is N2 over N1. Under dilute conditions, we substitute with our W1, W2, M2, M1. And we can use equation six. Of course, the constant KB, we call it a biloscopic constant. Just like KF in the depression of freezing point, we call that cryoscopic constant so elevation so elevation of boiling point and molecular weight that's what i've just explained if delta tb is equal to kb x2 we'll now replace x2 by our n1 i mean n2 over n1 so we can see we arrive at equation 12 and we can use this equation 12 to calculate the molecular weight of the solid or even to calculate the biloscopic constant or to calculate the elevation of boiling point now the next is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure appears to stand on its own when we have a solution separated from its pure solvent by semi-permeable membrane which allows passage of only solvent molecules Solvent molecules will diffuse into the solution. That is our osmosis. Remember, definition of osmosis is elementary chemistry. This diffusion is because this pure solvent is more concentrated in solvent molecules than the solution. It is possible, however, to stop the diffusion of solvent molecules from pure solvent into the solution. Now, this can be achieved by applying on the solution pressure that stops this diffusion. So this pressure is known as osmotic pressure of the solution. So we can define osmotic pressure as that which restores equilibrium between pure solvent and the solution. And of course, osmotic pressure is one of the colligative properties of a solution, which can be used to determine molecular weight. Osmotic pressure and molecular weight. We'll do the same again, equation 13 and 14 in terms of chemical potential. And when we equate and solve, we'll get equation 17. Now, for dilute solution, X1 must be close to unity. So we can now find our X2. And X2 is equal to N2 divided by 
N1 plus N2, which is approximately N2 over N1 for dilute solutions. So we we'll have that pi, which is osmotic pressure, is given by equation 21. And we can reduce that to equation 23, which is used for molecular weight determination. And of course, osmotic pressure can be used to determine the molecular weight of high molecular weight compounds. While freezing point method is more reliable than lowering of vapor pressure and elevation of boiling point because we can measure freezing points, you know, depression of freezing point more accurately than elevation of boiling point or lowering of vapor pressure. But note that osmotic pressure is mostly used for high molecular weight compounds. Solute in dilute solution. This gives us nice distribution law or Henry's law. Now solvents follow Rao's law in dilute solution, whereas solutes do not. So we'll do the same thing again. You know, when we want to distribute between two phases alpha and beta, look at mu alpha is equal to mu naught alpha plus arutelin x. The same thing again, beta, beta, that's equal to 24, 25. And at equilibrium, then mu alpha must be equal to mu beta. We equate the two, equation 24 and 25, and we get equation 26. And then we can solve. And we'll have equation 28, which is a constant. That is the distribution of X in phase alpha and in phase B must be equal to a constant. And we call that Nernst distribution law. That is equation 28. Illustration. A glucose solution are prepared by dissolving 58 grams of glucose in a liter of water. We calculate the osmotic pressure of the solution at 298K. We use our equation M2 is equal to WROT divided by pi V. Osmotic pressure we are looking for is pi, which is equal to that. Now first, we'll get the number of moles, 56 over 180. That is the molecular weight. Y56 is a gram of glucose and what it is a molecular weight of glucose. We substitute in that equation and we get 7.58 atmospheres. So you have to be careful where students always have problem is the value of R. When you look at the units, look at the R we use here is 0 0.82. If you had used 8.13, the units will be different. So you have to start converting. That is dimensional consistency or unit analysis. You have to be sure of the units that you must use. So the R we use there is 0 0.082. Thank you very much. We looked at elevation of boiling point and molecular weight. We have also looked at osmotic pressure and molecular weight. And we looked at solute in dilute solution looked at illustration thank you so much for being with us throughout this class and throughout our online we're going to see in the physical class then expect your assignments your tests and so on which can either be online can be on site but we're going to prefer online thank you and god bless you